Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Black Dot Blog. I'm Heaven Sharnice, the founder of Heavy Talk Media. Today, I'll be speaking with the founder of Stated in Them. So we could start with just telling us a little bit about who you are. So I am Latoni Chrome. I'm an educator and entrepreneur. Um, most of y'all probably know me from Stated, Stated in Them. That is my community and student engagement business. Um, and so basically, Stated is just trying to educate and empower everybody authentically um, through creative expression and community building. So yeah, um, mother, you know, just out here doing the things, as many things as I can while, you know, still feeling good and doing them. No, that's right. So talk about the name. Love the name Stated and then talk about how you came up with the name for those that don't know. Okay. So what Stated means, I mean, just by definition, um, Webster, at least, it means um, something that is clear, clearly spoken or written. And so um, back in the 90s, early 2000s, um, when I was growing up, we would say stated or state my word. Um, and as you can use it as a question or an explanation or just a period. And, but you're asking the person to be clear in what they're saying. So if it's like, man, my grandma made some pies today. I'm like, state it. You like state it, you know, or state my word. Like, yes, I definitely mean that grandma made the pies and <laughs> they tend to be official. So it means to be clear and to be honest. And so for me, that is an attitude. Um, that is how I like to conduct myself. That is how I hold myself accountable to my word because your word is all that you have until you can follow through with your actions. And so I was just like, you know what? Why why can't my business be called stated? You know, and so <laughs> it's stated on paper, you know, um, the short version is stated, but like on paper, excuse me, is stated in them because it's stated. I could have said stated in company, but that's just not how I talk. <laughs> so a lot of that is leaning into my own mother tongue. And so um, stated offers more than just workshops. We're out here doing community events. There's also merch. Stated offers creative um, consulting. And so the NIM or them, however you pronounce it, depending on where you're from, it means in addition to, you know, so it could be just the people that I'm working with or the other projects that I have going on. So you just kind of, you never know what's stated in them. You never know. <laughs> Absolutely love that. So you talked a little bit about it, but what actually is the mission of stated? What do you guys do? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, So with my community engagement portion, I am looking to bring people together in an intentional kind of way. Um, Meaning like I'm, I'm out here in this world. And so I want to create events that I feel like, you know, will bring everybody together. Well, as many people together as possible that aren't necessarily the norm. So you won't see stated really, uh, you won't see us hosting a party <laughs> unless it's something is there, unless there's a bigger mission behind the party. But so far, as far as community events, we've done like yoga for the Neo Soul, because when is the last time you went to yoga with Neo Soul music and, and, a, and a yogi um, who also does poetry? Like, tell me when. <laughs> um, we've also done a ladies night, um, this vigorous um how do we call it i'm so sorry a vigorous intense pregame so it was like just to warm up before we go out to the club if that's what you choose to do but it was more so about bringing ladies together without the distractions and other like outside noise of going out giving us a safe space to be but really it was more about health and wellness um so we weren't having like champagne and all that other stuff you know yeah we was popping bottles but it was held at a glow nutrition which is a, you know, a nutrition bar and they had like healthy drinks and stuff. So we're trying to do everything with a twist when it comes to community events. And then as far as student engagement, um, state's biggest mission is, <laughs> is to get young folks um, to lean into their literacies. Now, literacy by definition means to read and write, but then there's another definition that means to know what you know, essentially. And so everybody knows something, which means everybody has something to contribute. And so I'm looking to empower the youth get them to lean in into their literacies, like I said, and to also have them tap into their interpersonal communication skills, because this generation, you know, this is a tech driven, um, a tech driven generation. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with that to an extent. However, there are some essential things that I think that they could benefit from as far as like relationship building and just self-talk, how they talk to themselves. So I'm trying to get them to just take a step back or even just expose them to something new because some of them just don't have that at all. Love it, love all of that. So you talk quite a bit about a lot of the projects that you guys have done. And I've in my research, I've seen some of them. Um, I really like the ones that you did, um, I think in regards to 
homecoming with the students and just making sure yeah. that they were staying safe during homecoming. So can you talk a little bit about that one that you did? That's my favorite. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> I mean, Aggie Pride. So <laughs> my students. Aggie Pride. Are, right. And so I guess because I'm an educator, I believe that, you know, it is my role to present information to them in the best way that I feel like they will um, soak it up. But then I have to take a step back and see what they can do with the information. And so my stated scholars, these are students who I've been mentoring and having workshops with. So we've been doing um, different activities um, and they've been taking notes on how to be good presenters and you know what it takes to just captivate an audience and what it takes to like present a topic that you are passionate about. And so I asked them like, you know, so what y'all want to do? You know, like it's time for you to teach somebody else because each one teach one. So we're all taught. And so they were like, um, I think we should talk to the new incoming freshman about GIHO. Um, and for those of y'all who don't know, GIHO stands for the greatest homecoming on earth. Um, and there is only one. And that is the one that belongs to North Carolina A&T State University. Okay. But <laughs> so um, they got I think we had over 50. I want to say it was over 50. I can't even remember the numbers off the top of my head, but it was a pretty full house. Um, but they were incoming freshmen who had never experienced GHO or who had heard about it. You know, they're they're new here. And it's like, okay, great. That's cool. But before y'all get out here and lose your mind, let's educate y'all on a few things as far as terminology. And then we had some um, role playing, some situational awareness, you know, going on. Um, and so that is one that I was very proud of because I got to sit back and watch my scholars just do their thing. So it was student led because I feel like I could get up there and talk to them all the time and be like, listen, y'all don't do this. Try to do this, all of that. But, you know, I'm very much so aware of audience awareness and, you know, all of that. So it's like, girl, OK, Miss Crumbs, of course, you're going to tell us that. OK, well, let me get somebody who, you know, is more so around your age, who knows some stuff, who's experienced some stuff as well. You know, so that's what um, Jiho, the, the survival survival kit was about but yeah and it was it was really good and um the students have been asking for that again so we'll probably run it back i absolutely love that that's something that you definitely should run back and heavy on that aggie pride so you talked okay. about <laughs> aggie pride every day all day so you talked about your stated scholar so talk a little bit more about that and how can someone potentially become a stated scholar yes so stated scholar <laughs> So initially, because I am in the process of um, rebranding certain things, but um, Stated Scholars initially was um, me handpicking students that I feel like have that oomph about them. Like they have that stated attitude, you know, that they're everything that they are about is clear and honest, but it was supposed to be about promoting literacy. Um, and again, doing those workshops and things like that. Um, and then it started, the interest started growing. <laughs> Um, and I'm happy about that, but um, it, it, it just kind of took off faster than I anticipated. And so that is why I am working on um, the process and the system of getting um, more people to be stated scholars, because initially I felt like, well, anybody could be a stated scholar as long as you are in a position to want to learn more. Um, so, you know, heavy talk, stated scholar, you know, whoever is really has that attitude and that 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 sense of learning about them cool but then i'm just like no i think that yes you are a state scholar however to be an official one you know that there's a couple things that we need you to do over here so you know that means going through our i guess like due process or whatever but you know there's somewhat of an application process and then also you know, we've got to see what you can do, you know. So it's one thing to claim being a state of scholar, but we got to make sure that you can walk it like you talk it and that you talk it like you walk it. You know what I'm saying? So um, we are in the process of changing um, how we get people to become official state of scholars, um, because eventually I do want it to be something that is available for younger youth, for high schoolers and for um, college students. Our first, um, I guess you could say, beta beta group was collegiate. And that is so great. Um, I would like to keep that going. Um, but again, y'all just kind of stay, stay tuned for that. Cause I got, I got some heat that I'm going back out once we rebranded, but pretty much the first group of state of scholars were, um, first, no, no, they were first, second semester. What am I talking about? Second semester, freshman, first year, um, sophomores, first semester, sophomores, um, collegiate. 
Okay, I've seen a lot. I actually love the, the status scholars. I would see the, the different photo shoots that you guys would do, and they would always participate whenever you had some events. And I always yeah. really liked what you guys did, the, when stated did the um, book drive or the donations. So can Definitely. you talk a little bit about that? Right, um, because it's one thing to learn, but again, you got to do something with that learning. And so a big part for stated is literacy in all realms. Um, and so I like service projects. I feel like, you know, what is one thing that's standing out for you and what can we do with it? And so for that particular time, um, I had a stated scholar um, and she's actually on a pre-med track. And I just asked her, she wanted to be a stated scholar. So I was like, okay, let me give you some homework, <laughs> you know, you research stated and tell me where you see yourself. And she came back and she was like, listen, I see myself in the service aspect of stated. And I said, okay, great. So how can you make your mark out here? How can you state your words, state your actions out here in the world? And she was just like, um, I mean, you know, and infuse that with what you, what you have going on, you know, you want to be a doctor. And so she was just like thinking about it. She was like, well, maybe we could do something with pediatrics. And I was like, okay, something like what? And she just was thinking. And I, between the two of us, we came up with a book drive, you know? And so we narrowed it down a little bit more, which was, okay, we don't want to just get books for pediatric patients. We want specific books. We want books that look like, that have characters and, and that are written by authors that look like us and also some of the population that she would be serving because she wants to be a pediatrician in the inner city. Okay. Awesome. So we had the book drive. We set a goal. That was our March manifestation where instead of March Madness, because Madness is crazy, girl, and it ain't nothing crazy about stated. OK, we're very intentional. So March manifestation was to raise over 200 books um, that were written by black and indigenous, you know, authors, girl. Books came in from everywhere, from California, from Texas, wow. from New York. I mean, the books were coming. I mean, people were adding them to our Amazon list. And I was just like, yes, this is like prime to me community engagement. Like the community all over is contributing to a common goal. And so we end up dividing those books. We sent them over to, um, we got books because uh, they were different age ranges and stuff. So we were able to donate books to Dudley High School, to Wake Forest Baptist Pediatrics, um, to the YMCA Youth Center, and it's somebody else at the top of my tip of my tongue, but we were able to um, backpack beginnings. Yeah, we were able to distribute those books like in different directions. And so it really felt good for for all of us that were involved in it. Um, we had college students right there contributing books. They're calling their parents like, hey, do y'all got any books? They're going through the books. But it was like also I think eye opening for for the people who were contributing because now you have to do a little bit of digging because when you go into these bookstores, a lot of times if you as a black person or or anybody else an, another person of color you don't necessarily see you at the front you know so you had to do a little bit of digging but then once you get into it we like oh my gosh look at these books these are beautiful books and so we got to you know we had certain authors we got to meet certain authors who contributed their books i mean it was great it was really it was amazing and so i was really proud of her for getting into her bag for doing some research and then just you know figuring out how she could carve a path because service um service is not just it's not a self-serving thing you know it's for others and so i think that experience will carry with my scholar and all the other scholars who contributed and everybody who contributed actually for a long time it sounds like a really really great event are you guys going to be hosting another book drive anytime soon for those that want to support oh uh, yes we'll do another book drive um I, we're going to switch it up a little bit or you know there's always, listen, bring me the book. Actually, I have books right now because apparently stated, well, Miss Chromes, Miss Tony, I am the book lady. So people are like, oh, you still need some books? I got some books for you. And so people are bringing me books randomly. And I'm like, you know what? I will find them a good home. So the books that I have, I'm probably going to contribute to those, uh, what do they call them? The little libraries where you ride down the street, you see like a uh, a little, uh, almost like a birdhouse, but it's a, it's a book house. <laughs> I'm going to contribute to those. But we'll be um, definitely doing another book drive in the near future. Another big uh, project that I've seen that you guys did, um, I cannot remember exactly what month it was for, but I believe it was around, I think, Mother's Day, and you had um, your supporters of stated write letters. Can you talk a little bit yes. about that? Yes. I'm talking about, because I absolutely love that as well. Right. That was another one of our um, March manifestations where... Um, 
we wrote, you know, I just invited the community to write some words of encouragement to women who are um, going through some tough times because March is also Women's History Month. And so it's one thing that, you know, for us to honor our heroines, but how about the ones, the, the women who might get overlooked because there are women heroes right, you know, right up under our noses that you know. And I'm not saying that you get shouldn't give your shout outs to the big, well-known women and stuff like that, but like, be for real and look at the neighbor next door, the one who used to be looking out for you. You know what I'm saying? So I just thought that it would be um, uh, pretty dope to just for all of us to kind of come together and write some words of encouragement because these cars got dropped off to transitional housing for women um, and shelters. And so, I mean, obviously, if you are in between some stuff, so in between life periods and stuff, you might need some some words of encouragement. So they were able to either write lyrics, something from their heart, whatever, nothing too crazy. I mean, but the cards, some of them were really short. Some of them were really lengthy, but I believe that they all came from a very authentic place. So that was something that um, I was excited that we could we could do. Um, I can't think of the numbers for that. I want to say maybe we raised near 200 cards or something, something near near 200. And I was just like, yeah, as long as that's a little bit, even if we would have had just five cards, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't matter. I just feel like, for real, not to sound cliche, but like for real, for real, reach out and text somebody. <laughs> Honestly, I completely understand. So I love all that you guys have been doing. You talk quite a bit about all the projects and all the different things that you've done, whether with stated or with your stated scholars. So for people that have heard all of this and know for sure that they want to jump in and support, what are some ways that people can support, whether they live in the state where stated is active or out of the country? How can they support? Absolutely. So one, please stay connected. You are more than welcome to dialogue um, and connect via social media or even email. Like if you want to just send stated some ideas or just to reach out and say, hey, you know, just love the work that you're doing. Send us some words of encouragement because entrepreneurship is hard. You can definitely reach out. Um, the website is statemyword.com. Social media, we're at 21 stated. That's the number two, the number one, the word stated all together. So pretty consistent across social media with that name. Um, and also the email, state my word at gmail.com. Um, I'm open to collaborating with other people. So I feel like that is one of the things that's really important to me, which is why I stated in them, because them, I'm going to go over there and work with them and connect with them. Um, so maybe we can collab for community events or just even a, a community initiative. Whatever the case may be, if it sounds good, if it sounds like it's in alignment with, with, with both of us or necessary parties, then definitely we can do it. Um, you also can follow um, at Stated Scholars. I forgot all about that page. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, at Stated Scholars um, on Instagram. And so, yeah, that's the biggest way. I think right now we have been pushing out like what we're doing through social media and then we're getting ready to start our newsletter. So you can definitely subscribe to the site, statemyword.com. Just go ahead and subscribe um, so that you can be on our mailing list for the newsletter of the happenings and things to do. So jump in at any time, so like our post, share the post, you know, tell a friend to tell a friend, shop with stated, you know, it's not really about the actual merch. It's more so about the message that's on there. It's always been about the message and not necessarily the thread. So go ahead and shop with, shop with stated, put your messages out there, get some conversation started but without even opening your mouth. Just throw it on the hat or the t-shirt, you know, never know what people are going to come up and say to you. What are you bringing to the cookouts? <laughs> well, oh my! Bring. Let me see, y'all. I'm gonna give my safe answer first. My safe answer is I'm gonna bring some chips. <laughs> okay, safe answer, chips. Safe answer is chips. Now, if What's I really the other love, one? I want to hear this one. Yes, if I really, really love the the cookout and wish that I'm going to, I'm going to cook something. So my highly requested people love my pasta salad. People love my baked beans. And also, I know people, you don't usually see cabbage at a cookout, but people be loving my cabbage. So listen, I'm, I'm going to put cabbage on my plate at the cookout if you had it. If, I would love it if y'all make greens at the cookout. So I'm going to bring one of those three. And if I really, really like you, I might bring all three. <laughs> you right. I've never in all of my days heard of cabbage at a cookout. That that's so listen, let me explain because it's not enough vegetables at the cookout, and I don't want to eat corn in the cob. 
What's <laughs> wrong with Court on the Cob? <laughs> Nothing is wrong with Court on the Cob, but something about the corn being stuck in my teeth, like biting into, like, right. I know that's you know, right. I'm not that right. much of a, it don't. And it's just like, oh man, I just feel like maybe I'm just too animated when I eat my corn in the cob. <laughs> when I eat my corn. <laughs> And why you want corn the cob? I just feel like a cartoon character. So I feel like, listen, um, bring me some single kernels if you must. I'll eat them with a spoon. Or just let me have my cabbage and I will eat it with a fork and it just won't be a problem. It just won't be a problem. But yeah, um, that's that's probably what I'm gonna bring to the cookout. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I don't think that there is a quote unquote cute way to like eat corn. I think either way you're gonna look a bit messy because it's just you it's, are. It's going everywhere. Yeah, it's just not right. It's not it's right. Not. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you are absolutely right. So my next question is keeping with all things that are black. You talked about Aggie Pride, the illustrious North Carolina A N T. So talk about what you think about HBCUs and the role that you think they play in the black community, if any. Hmm. So um, there was a book that I read, and I, forgive me for the title, I'll shoot it to you so you can, um, you know, plug your people in because, you know, we love a good book. But uh, basically, this book was kind of eye-opening to me. And I'm mentioning this because I went to an HBCU before I read the book. <laughs> and so I went to the HBCU, and I just was like, okay, like, this is cool. Um, I was under the, the influence of other Aggies. So, of course, I got pushed in that direction, but I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining at all. But this book was eye opening to me because um, it was like the standard. HBCUs were the standard when we talk like um, when you look at like black history and black youth, uh, not black youth, black wealth, black elite and things like that. And I'm just like, oh, wow. Like, I did not know, like, it was like, no, you need, like, that's the only option, but to go to an HBCU and then, you know, that is, it has its own level of prestige. Whereas I feel like currently, you know, given our, just the times that we're in, I feel like it's like one of those spaces that maybe people take for granted. It's like, oh, I could go here or there. It's like, I got options. Like, yeah, you do. And you, you know, you do have options, but why not an HBCU where you are in a safe space to learn, and also just get out here and experience, you know, different people because, you know, black people are not a monolith. And that was another thing that I learned while I was there. I was like, oh, wow. Like, so we all didn't come from, oh, okay. Oh, you do. Oh, okay. Like, I, it was just eye opening for me. And so um, as a person who went to a PWI first, the culture just is different. Black people, black spaces are generally more welcoming than others. Whereas, you know, our slogan is Aggies do. And so we get right in and we get to helping each other out. Hey, you don't have the books? Okay, I got you. You can, you know, I'm going to send you a couple pictures of my book or, you know, a couple of different people scan some different, you know, we're going to figure out a way to get it done. Whereas I feel like at a PWI and it's no shade to them, it's just my own experience. It's a little bit more like competitive. It's like everybody for themselves. Well, you don't got the book. Great. So I'm 10 steps ahead of you. Like, yo, what? <laughs> what? But HBCUs, at least in my um, in my humble opinion, and again my experience at A um, and T, it was not like that. Like my professors, I was able to put some of my professors down as emergency contacts for my son. Like like building community at an HBCU is just a lot different, and I feel like we need that. We need that because I think out here, you know, different people coming up especially with these social media driven driven mindsets and, and and outlooks and everything it's just like everybody is kind of returning to that out for self type of thing and i'm like oh nah because we've always been the village for each other and we need to return to that and so i feel like if you have an opportunity to go to an hbcu you should because that's where that is fostered you know so i think that hbcus I, everybody but listen black children go to an hbcu Go to HBCU. Black parents, send your child to an HBCU. You know, even if they don't stay, just go for a semester or two and, and look outside. I mean, you know, think outside the box. Just really be present in the moment, you know, because, again, where you learn is just as important as what you learn. So that was, for me, was one of the most safest space I've ever learned in. And I was able just to, you know, be who I was, you know, and you don't always get that opportunity. We we have so many things stacked up against us. Why not go to HBCU and keep our legacy going? You just dropped a whole bunch of knowledge. You just dropped a bar too. Like I <laughs> <laughs> but you just you just dropped the bar. I'm gonna have to quote that up. So be be looking for that quote. Yeah, so, girl. 
As we close out, my um, one of my last questions to you is, what projects does Stata have coming up? If hmm. Well, guys, <laughs> <laughs> I got this thing about me where I don't like to speak on it until it's done. So if you really want to know if you are that interested, I strongly suggest that y'all follow at 21 Stated across social media that you subscribe to the website, statemyword.com, because I got some heat brewing, but I want to make sure that, you know, our formula is 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 straight before I present it to y'all. Um, and in the meantime, make sure that y'all are heading over to the Juneteenth Business Expo to shop with Stated and the rest of the vendors. But yeah, I, I can't I can't give you the sauce just yet. The sauce is still is still simmering, y'all. I just just wait on it. It's coming. Y'all know I ain't going to drag y'all through no nonsense. It's coming. I love that. <laughs> so as we as we close it out, tell us where we could find shop and support stated. Cause I know we have all love all of the information that you've drawn. We we love the mission and we want to rock with it. So tell us where we could find you at and support. Right. Okay. So listen, if y'all are in Greensboro, North Carolina, plug in with your girl. I'm trying to be outside a little bit more than I have been. I pull up to events and all of that stuff, you know. Um, we've also currently been doing some press coverage um, for State My Word Radio. So invite Stated to your happenings. I just like to see what's going on in the community. So there's that. But once again, follow us on social media at 21 Stated and the website, statemyword.com or email. Like, listen, girl, I, I forgot everything that you said. Go ahead and send me an email, statemyword at gmail.com. That's, that's the biggest ways that you can stay connected and also if you want to go back and listen to episodes of state my word radio it's right there on the website the merch is on the website the vision is on the website everything is there's on the website y'all 